Hello Model Railroad fans. Today I'm going to do something a little bit different than what I would normally do on my channel. And that's all in this bag right here. So give me just one moment to take all of this stuff out of the bag and we'll go over what's going to be coming up next. So give me one second and I'll be right back. Thank you very much for uh, sitting through that quick introduction, and as always, I would like to welcome you to Vintage Road and Rail. Um, if you've watched any of my videos in the past, I'm going to try to lower this camera just a tad, you'll know that a lot of the videos that I have been doing have been haul videos where I'm going over stuff that I picked up at, um, you know, various hobby shops or... Uh, model railroad conventions or you've also seen me uh, with some footage videos with some footage of layouts that I've seen at these hobby shops and so forth um, also I've run a lot of vintage uh, locomotives and some train sets but um, in one of my videos um, well before I get there you'll notice that I just have a table with some track on it so in one of my videos someone had asked me if I was ever going to do some scenery um, and the answer to that is yes, um, but I'm still figuring out my final layout uh, because I'm not, th this is just something temporary to run stuff on, uh, but I'm just about to get that fin uh, finalized if I can talk there. But um, anyway, I have never done model railroading scenery. Um, I'm new to the hobby. I just got into this about a year ago, maybe a little bit longer, a year and a couple of months. And... I had been collecting train stuff for four or six months before I even got a table to set up a loop of track on. Uh, so I'm really new at this. I have never put together an HO scale building, let alone done any weathering or anything like that. So I figured before I started tackling my table that a good way to get some practice in would be to build a diorama. And so that's what I'm going to be doing over the next few weeks, and this video is going to be the first in a series of what I hope to be at least four videos um, that I'm going to be doing over the next, hopefully one every week, but it may be one every couple weeks. Um, but I'm going to be building an HO scale diorama. And so let's take a moment, and in this video we're going to just go over what my plan is and what I'm thinking I've got in mind with this diorama. And let's go from there. All right, so this is the contents of that bag, minus um, this over here wouldn't fit in the bag. So right here is, and that doesn't belong in there. I picked this up, I believe, at Hobby Lobby. This is a certificate of achievement frame. Uh, now, I had gotten the idea from someone on Facebook to build a diorama on an 8x10 picture frame, and so I went to Hobby Lobby to pick one of these up and did not like the prices, but I found this on their clearance rack, and it's a certificate frame for diplomas and so forth, and it's a shade bigger than a standard 8x10 picture frame. Uh, if we can see here, it's eight and a half by eleven, so it's not much bigger, but it is about a half inch longer. Well, I guess this direction here. All right, so that's going to be the base for this. All right, now the other thing is extremely loosely, this diorama is going to be based off the movie um, Tremors. And what I mean by that is when I had went to one of my local hobby shops, I was trying to find an idea for something that would fit on this relatively small surface. And also wasn't going to be overly complicated, as I'd mentioned, I had never built one of these things before. And then I spotted this. It's a lifelike shanty with water tower and windmill. And when I saw this, I immediately thought of Tremors. And if you've ever watched that movie, uh, towards the beginning of it, before they realized what was going on, there was a fellow on there named Fred, lived in a little shack, probably about this big, 
and raise sheep. Well, poor old Fred didn't last long, but um, when I saw this, that's the first thing I thought of. So I picked this up. Uh, what did I what did I pay for it? I don't think I paid much. Eight dollars for it, um, and so I figured this would be a good place to start. All right. So this is going to be the primary structure. So let's set that aside. And this is also, if you look at the uh, title of my video, it's Dirt Pour. That's what this is. It's a dirt pour diorama, and and you don't get much worse than that. If you're much worse than that, you're, you're living in a sleeping bag somewhere. So that's kind of the idea behind that. And I figured they're still going to need some transportation, so I picked up this um, old 60s Ford pickup, and... I'm going to see what I can do and make, about making it look just really old and beat up. Um, I'm not sure what kind of weathering I'm going to do on this because, like I said, I've never weathered anything. So this build may just be as is until I kind of get comfortable tackling that part. But anyway, this is the, the pickup that I've got in mind. Uh, the other thing is when I was looking at the size of this place... I just have the feeling that anybody living in a space that size is not wasting time on a bathroom anywhere and may not even have since they had this um, water tower which I'm not sure I'm going to include in the diorama or not probably doesn't even have running water at least in the sense of a traditional what we think of as running water so with that in mind I picked up these three outhouses uh, so I would put one of these together and put it behind that shack and I figure these people are going to be kind of agricultural or very agricultural uh, the diorama or the uh, kit does come with some cows so I may add a few more livestock and I picked up these farm people uh, trying to figure out if some of these folks will work well in here uh, along with you know the figures that are included and I'm debating as to whether, here's the, the picture frame, let's bring this back in. I'm debating as to whether I want to build straight on this or if I want to cut this uh, Woodland Scenics foam to fit in here. Um, if I put the Woodland Scenics foam on here, then when I go to put in my cork road bed and my track, it's going to sit up above this. But if I put that in, um, I think I was going to go this way. Yeah, that was what my plan was. So if I put it just on this base without this foam, when I build this up with the cork road bed, it'll be about even with here. So that's kind of the way I'm thinking I'm going to go, but I'm not 100% sure. So um, anyway, so video is starting to get a little bit long, so I'm going to start wrapping this up because this is just... Um, a video kind of going over my overall plan so what I'm thinking of doing is either butting this up all the way against so I don't have anything to worry about detailing over here and to have more landscape there or I may run it out just a tad so I can do some detail here and then I've got these pieces of track and I've got a smaller piece to add on there to make it towards close to this length and then all of this out here is going to be the diorama. Uh, I'm thinking of putting the building right here and I meant to pick it up but I didn't but I thought about getting some fence some HO scale fence and run that across right here so that that's kind of separating their land from the railroad track that way their livestock that they're going to have out here won't wander onto the tracks. The other thing I thought about putting on here was I picked up this tractor but as I got to thinking about it, I'm not sure if with the dirt poor theme that I had in mind with this, if they would be affording a tractor. But I'm not sure if that's going to fit or not. So I've got the tractor, but I may opt just to throw that tractor on there anyway, just because I like the look of it. So uh, anyway, so that is the plan that I've got in mind. Um, so... I'm going to start drawing this video up to a close. So the next video I do, I'm going to be building up the base. And 
like I said, I hope to have at least four videos on this. Um, but don't expect me to be doing a whole lot of weathering, and you can probably expect me to screw up quite a few things because I have never done this. So please forgive me. <laughs> so anyway, um, yeah, so if you're interested in seeing where this project goes, uh, make sure and hit that like button and subscribe. Um, if you're like me, kind of new to model railroading and never done this before, um, feel free to kind of follow along and kind of learn from some of my mistakes. And if you, if anybody has any tips along the way, feel free to throw them in the comments. Uh, and I will definitely read them and see if maybe I can apply those, uh, to this little project. All right. Well, that wraps this up. So I would like to thank you very much for joining me today. Uh, like I said, hit that like button, subscribe, hit the notification bell if you want to be alerted as to when the next video comes up, and leave those comments. Alright, well you have a great day everyone, and happy model railroading.